What's up, my friends? Welcome to the Father Daughter Dance podcast, which helps dads keep up with the velocity of how things are changing for our daughters and gives daughters the space to talk about the relationship too. Please subscribe to and rate review the podcast. It really helps us. Um, you know, I'm actually pretty honored to let you know that the Father Daughter Dance podcast is rated in the top five percent of 3.5 million. Um, worldwide podcast rated by a Nielsen type organization for podcast. And uh, the best part of the rating is how high my listen through um, rating is like a lot of people listen all the way to the end. And, you know, thank you, my dear listeners. Thank you. And uh, for all that you are and all that you do. This week, my very close friend and college classmate, Doug DeAngelis, joins the podcast. And like my college classmates, Ben Peavy and Jim Eschweiler, both of season one, he is near and dear to my heart. And Doug shares about his amazing daughter, Olivia, who is in college in the Midwest. Doug opens up about the difficulties at times of Olivia growing up in different households and being her dad. And he shares practical examples of how it played out. Not surprisingly, Doug is fabulous talking about his vulnerable side where he wonders, did he do enough or is he doing enough and where does he need to grow? And he shares, you know, about how he had strong women throughout his life and his family lineage that really helped him grow. And he talks about his current wife, Susan, who is Olivia's stepmother. And I met Susan in March, 2023, when I was doing my play and she's phenomenal and was touched how uh, considerate and deep and interesting. She was, uh, and she loves my sense of humor. Thank you very much. Uh, but look, I want to cover actually the idea of step parents and how they play a role in our daughter's lives and in my life, particularly. Zoe grew up in two households, mine and, and her mom's. And I have yet to remarry, but, uh, her mom did, um, uh, remarry. Uh, so she, she has a stepdad and, and me not remarrying has upsides and downsides. I know she kind of had her all to myself. And for what it's worth, I grew up in a cozy little city called South Bend, Indiana, a relatively small Midwestern city. Most and maybe even only notable thing about it is that Notre Dame is in the middle of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get they used to make Studebakers there, but they went out of style and they even made DeLoreans there for the Back to the Future fans. Um, Although Johnny Boy DeLorean, uh, I think, stuffed a couple of them with more narcotic snow in the cars than some of the snow we'd see in winter to pay off some of the company debts. In any case, in this small hamlet, in my life, I only knew of one divorce amongst all the families that uh, I engaged with. And I just grew up thinking through those early years that most, if not all, parents stayed together. And yes, in those days... And still true today, there are parents that quote unquote stay together for their kids, which is uh, perhaps a whole separate topic I'll take on at some point because uh, it seems to mostly be done with no real emotional resonance and ends up sometimes doing more damage to the kids than a divorce would have. But that's a that's a uh, challenging um, perspective that I'll take without any any kind of backup to it. So <laughs> it's just that's just me being me. Um, since then, I know a lot more examples of divorces and step parents parents being part of the picture. Both my mom and dad got remarried in my late 20s or after my late 20s, I should say. But see, in that case, my stepmom and stepdad didn't have behavioral influence over me early, even as I was struggling through a lot of those years between 30 and 40. What I do know is both my stepmom and stepdad cared about me in those darkest of moments. And, and they cared in different ways, but I still knew, know they both cared. And um, I, like, I thank God Zo for Zoe's stepdad. He was a present force in her life during years when I was unsteady, I think is the best way to say it. He and Zoe's mom are still together and I legitimately enjoy being around him actually and chatting with him and hanging out at functions we're both at. And we have had some difference on opinions on subjects that sometimes included emotional approaches to things. And I was always um, one step behind because of what I was doing or what I had recently done when I was in those struggle years. 
But I was always comfortable that Zoe knew that I was her dad and uh, her stepdad never once tried to be her dad. And uh, he was very careful about not impinging upon that relationship. But he was a responsible adult uh, with her when needed. And I came close to being a stepdad once. I loved a little girl with a, a woman I had dated. And uh, it was one of the hardest parts of the breakups, honestly, and still is. Um, I see pictures of her growing up, and it does create a little bit of uh, hurt in my heart. But um, recently, I'd, the reason I'm bringing this up is because recently I've been in more conversations than I can count about the power of a great step parent. I mean, it's got to be a very difficult thing because the step parent, if emotionally healthy, loves his or her partner and has emotional vision and feel into how the child impacts them, meaning the partner, and yet still has the presence to know when to step back and when to step in. The truth is I struggle with the notion that Zoe even needed um, a step parent because of what I did. Somehow it feels like a failure on my part. I do my best to not overparent to like make up for those things. The feelings range from guilt to anger at myself, confusion about how it might impact our sadness. And yes, I find gratitude and um, that I got lucky with Zoe's stepdad because I've also had conversations where I know the destructive outcomes of a step parent who may be worse or substantially worse from a biological parent who may have been just bad news, which is just really sad. Um, that being said, I kind of feel like step parents aren't given enough credit. I know Zoe's stepdad had to walk through some fire with Zoe, and at, and at times, guess what? Um, he's still here, and he still supports her and is a stable, loving dad for his own daughter, who is who Zoe calls her sister. Those times when I was awash in my feelings, and I have what I can only describe as a weird line of code in me. Because I had these feelings the other day. I was listening to the song. God, this is a total, this is probably going to lose most of you. It was a song called Just When I Needed You Most by the great one hit wonder, Randy Van Warmer. And it's, it's about someone leaving you and uh, waiting to hear from them. And the pain of that day left. And I just started crying, no surprise. And I decided that uh, what I would do is binge listen to that song. Because my experience is that when someone wants something wants to reveal itself emotionally, a crack shows, uh, I'm better off actually just like going all the way in, which I did. And my logic is like, if I can let it fully out there, that it increases my approval of the source and, and, and maybe run out the well of sadness, at least for now. If I turn away quickly, I know uh, I leave the experience thinking, where did where the fuck did that come from? It feels unresolved, unaddressed. So I cried it out. And about an hour later, I sent a Zoe, Zoe a text telling her I'm proud of her and I believe in her and I love her. Um, and she sent me a very nice message back. I mean, it's possible the message comes in reaction to my feelings of failure and guilt, maybe, but I still sent it. I'm happy I did. I mean, this shit is just confusing sometimes, isn't it? My friends. Whew. Won't you join me on the dance floor? Step into the father-daughter dance podcast. Let's do this. Welcome again to the father-daughter dance podcast. And got a special guest today who, who was one of the, I guess we'd call it in the audience, a command performance, giving the <laughs> limited reach of the play that I did. And um, it was in March. You were lucky enough to be there in the audience. It was a treat to have you two in there. And, and, and one of my very good friends from college, Doug DeAngelis. Doug, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on. Absolutely. And, um, you know, uh, Doug and I were um, <laughs> hilarious friends in college. And I guess we'd call them competitors in RBI baseball, Nintendo, although we routinely... <laughs> I don't know if you call it like a, 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 a rivalry when you beat me every time and beat me soundly every time. So 
Well, that, that, that's funny. I had had uh, a lot of beatings that I took uh, from friends in, in high school. And um, so I, I appreciated the chance to, to actually uh, uh, beat on you. A <laughs> you're, always, you're always a really good sport about it, too. I mean, you, you always lamented uh, the, the defeat, but at the same time, we're up for the challenge the next time around. So that's, uh, that's always appreciate. I got to hire you as my publicist. Um, so, Doug, why don't you start out by telling the um, our listeners a little bit about you um, to the extent that you'd like and talk about maybe share the name of your wife and your daughter and son? Sure. No, absolutely. Um, I, I live in Chicagoland area, um, have been basically in the Chicagoland area in my entire life, with the exception of the the years of, of college uh, where you know, you and myself, Tim, were obviously up in, in Milwaukee, but always back, you know, in the summers and have made kind of Chicago uh, my home in, in a number of different suburbs in the city uh, at different times in my life. So um, my wife um, is Susan uh, and my uh, children are Olivia, who's 21, and Matthew, who's 11. Fabulous. And um, Susan came to the show and she's a wonderful person. And um you know, I know both of you were had your own thoughts and feelings about uh, about seeing the idea of a dad and a daughter. And, and I think that it would be helpful if we started before we get into that to talk about to whatever extent you're comfortable, um, your upbringing. I mean, I know you had a big family, um, but maybe sure. you want to talk a little bit about what you learned or what your experience was with your uh, your mom and dad. You know, I was very lucky to grow up with two very strong parents um, and two people who uh, in different ways shaped uh, my personality and, and a lot of who I identify to, to be, you know, uh, to today. So um, very blessed to have had uh, two individuals who um, certainly felt the need for family to be front and center. Uh, and that's, uh, that's something that's, uh, that I think truly is uh, extremely impactful uh, when you're trying to develop your own identity, when you realize that you've got the strength of, uh, you know, two parents who love you, uh, the strength of, uh, you know, two brothers and a, and a sister who uh, want to be active participants in your life, um, that's, that's a great position of strength to, to come from. Yep. Um, I, I grew up as the, uh, fourth of, of four kids and in a little bit of a unique situation because I am four years apart from my closest sibling and they are all within three years of each other. So, um, uh, they, you know, uniquely had uh, a little bit of uh, of a bond because they went through common experiences together as it relates to grade school and junior high and high school and college. Um, I was a little bit behind that. So I was kind of trailing uh, always, you know, in terms of um, the uh, the experience that I was going through. So, you know, obviously when I was in grade school, they were kind of in high school and uh, junior high and high school. And then when I was in high school, they were in college. So um, it, it was, it was interesting because while I felt like I had, um, you know, people that, that were very much in my camp uh, at all times and loved the experiences of spending time with them, they were trying to establish their own identities and right. going through things that I wasn't necessarily going through at that time. So it, it was a unique situation in that, you know, I grew up, very close to them, but also almost as a, uh, as a, you know, a, um, an only child yes. uh, in, in some respects. Over the years, though, we have just gotten closer and closer and, and, and they are thankfully very prominent members of, of my life uh, right now and, and, and will be, um, you know, forever. Uh, so, uh, but I have uh, my, my father, um, grew up in uh, the south suburbs of Chicago um, to uh, immigrant parents. Uh, my, my 
grandfather was directly from Italy. My grandmother had been born in in the United States, but was uh, second or first generation herself. Uh, so um, they were uh, they were people that uh, unfortunately I lost my grandfather when I was four. So, uh, but you know, I've heard wonderful stories about him over the years. Uh, my grandmother was very influential on my life. Mm-hmm. Um, she awesome lady, very strong lady. Which, uh, which side, Doug? That's that, I'm sorry, Tim. That's my, that's my father's side. Okay, got it. And uh, and my mother's side. Uh, my mom grew up in in Arkansas and actually met my father in Dallas, Texas. Wow! And then they moved up here. Uh, you know, uh, after my three siblings had been born, uh-huh. so I was. Uh, I was born here, um, and the the other three were born in Dallas, Texas, but moved up very at a very young age. Uh-huh. My father, um, you know, had very strong roots into the Chicagoland area. Um, my mother did not, so I did not get to spend as much time with um, my uh, uh, grandmother on my on my mom's side due to her. Uh, living in Arkansas and then eventually South Carolina, but, but we visited during the summers and, and, um, uh, definitely spent some time with, with her when, when we could. And, um, my mom's got a little bit of a unique story as well. And it just plays into the narrative of the strong women that have helped shape, uh, my perspective mm-hmm. and view on, on women overall. And hopefully Olivia's as time goes on as well. If it hasn't already, uh, Olivia, my daughter, um, uh, you know, my mom grew up, you know, in with a father who uh, came back from World War II and did the proverbial, I'm going to go out for cigarettes and never came back. Oh. So my, um, my grandmother was, was forced to fend for herself and, and her two children, um, eventually remarried. Uh, but, uh, but my mom, you know, her initial experience with, uh, with, you know, men overall was, I think having somebody leave and having to realize its impact on, on the family structure overall Mm. and and how difficult that can be. So, um, I I don't want to get, I mean, getting into my mom's narrative a little bit is, um, you know, I think a good exercise because it just once again shows you how strong and how much um, uh, you know uh, admiration I have for my mom mm-hmm. and how strong she is. So she first to go to uh, to college um, was engaged while she was in college. Um, her her fiance at the time uh, was in uh, in Dallas, Texas, and was coming over. Um, to uh, to see her while she was in at uh, in in college in Arkansas and and got killed by a drunk driver oh, on the way to uh, to see her. So uh, oh. she eventually moved to Dallas. But my mom, a lot. I mean, just I can't think of many women that I know in my life that are that are stronger role models for perseverance and and, and just uh, you know certainly taking um, life. Uh, and, and family uh, as, as a gift uh, than, than certainly my mother. My father, you know, shaped me in many different ways as well, but, but always shaped me to appreciate mothers and their contributions to the family unit. Uh, you know, he was a, a huge fan of his own mother and, and very appreciative, spent time with her whenever he could. Um, and, and just, uh, you know, we would, we would go over there on Sundays, uh, oftentimes. And, and he let me know very early on that, that his, his mother held a very special place in his life. Uh, so, um, just once again, goes into the narrative of the, the appreciation I have for my parents and the role model that my mom served as and, and the example that my dad set. Uh, as, as it relates to, to how women should be appreciated in our society. That's fantastic. And your dad was prolific um, in Chicago. And um, 
you know, it's not always to have, it's not always easy to have a high um, profile and still have those grounded roots. So it's, uh, and you know, it's interesting, you talk about your mom, because it's not uncommon for those kind of things to happen and for a man or woman not to recover from it and repeat stuff that is, um, is damaging in some ways because they haven't healed. And, um, you know, for your mom to have rebounded and shown that re resilience is, is um, truly uh, special. Let me ask you a different question. Were they the kind of parents that said, I love you to you? Uh, you know, my dad, absolutely. Okay. My dad was, uh, was extremely, uh, um, generous with affection uh -huh. uh, my mom you know you definitely knew that you were loved yep. it, it probably didn't come as naturally for her not that you not that you didn't feel it uh it just probably didn't get said as much yep. um, so that fits into the narrative that i think both of my parents uh you know gave to me and that was um you know, actions, you know, meant, you know, more than words. Yeah. Oftentimes, I mean, they were, they were big on making sure that your actions were consistent with the words that, uh, that, that you stated. And that's something that I've tried to impart to my kids. Yep. Uh, well, and it's something that's been very important to me. I think at, at different times in my life, I've struggled with balancing people's words to me and their actions towards me at the same time that yes. there's, a, there's a disconnect because that feels um and and from a very early time in my life that feels like a a very difficult thing for me to um to rationalize if if they're in there's inconsistency b between those two things well that's a perfect launching off point to talk about olivia because you know that's it's a great point you make that um you can say, I love you all you want, but if you're not doing the things that, that, um, if someone's not doing the things that demonstrate that you love them, uh, then I love you rings really hollow. Uh, absolutely right. And, um, and I can't think of a more empty feeling to basically have than to, to feel like you can say that to me, but yet not mean it in, in your actions. Uh, so that's, that's certainly something that, um, that, you know, I, I can't say I've always done it right. Uh, I certainly had, and I think all people kind of have issues at times, kind of making sure that those two things are consistent with, with one another. But at the same time, I, I, I certainly, as it relates to my kids, I think I've done, you know, the best that I possibly could to make sure that that was always, you know, in lockstep with one another. So let's talk about Olivia for a bit. Um, the, the, the idea of resilience, which really seems to resonate when you talk about it with me and the actions of your mother and uh, your grandmother's, honestly, give your mom's mom. <laughs> That's an incredible story. I've actually never heard that story. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How do you, because uh, you, you have by uh, almost every measure been very successful and I love to see good friends of mine succeed, man. It means, it means the world to me. Can you talk about your relationship with Olivia in terms of whether you discuss resilience or is it something like, did you have some experiences where you saw her grow there and you were able to see it or maybe just talk about resilience in your daughter? Well, I mean, I, I have not made mention of the fact that, um, that Olivia is from my first marriage. Mm -hmm. So I, I this, I mean, Susan is my second wife. Uh -huh. Olivia is from my first marriage. Um, and I think Olivia, uh, unfortunately, had to understand resiliency from, from the get-go. Yep. Um, I, I was, um, uh, uh, you know, basically separated pretty early into Olivia's life. Uh, and we were oftentimes uh, separated uh, from each other, not never more than, I mean, my schedule was generally, uh, I was working at a, uh, at an organization and, uh, told them when I was separated that, uh, that I was going to be changing the, 
the the playbook and and certainly gave them the chance to um uh to change my um uh, my employment uh but uh thankfully they didn't but i i went very early on to a schedule that was actually me spending thursday night to generally either saturday night sometimes sunday uh with olivia um every week and and i did that without help in in intentionally and that's just because i didn't get that you know the kind of time with her that i would have loved to have gotten so um you know from a at an early age i i could tell that at times she struggled with the idea of you know where have you kind of been yeah and why are we seeing you you know so that 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 was absolutely tough very tough on uh on olivia uh, tough on me, tough on my ex-wife. Um, you know, everybody kind of had to to be resilient to that situation. So uh, Olivia learned that pretty early on. Um, certainly understood the the idea of, of of two family, two households, pretty early on, and how to navigate those waters. So as a kid, you have to be resilient to, to do that. Right. I, I will say that's one of the the things that you know i i i feel is has been you know i i struggle with the most yeah to be honest with you because when you're a dad and you really adore your child Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just tough to feel like you know you're putting them in that situation yeah and um but in the same respect she has done nothing other than be an absolutely resilient force uh from from day one and she's certainly as all kids do had some struggles at times and it was difficult to to talk her through some of those situations where um she was having difficulties with the arrangement yep uh but at the same time you know she persevered and and is just such an awesome kid if you could look back on those conversations that you were having at that time and, and maybe when she was a little bit older, um, you know, five or six years older or whenever it really happened, if you could give that person advice, meaning you, uh, is there anything you would have done differently in how you handled it? That is a great question. <laughs> and, and, and I have not done probably enough self-discovery to figure out whether or not, because, you know, I, you you go through those situations and you just hope to keep your 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 kid intact because that's the most important thing you 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 subjugate your own feelings you you know you want them to just uh be okay and you want them to to be um you know somebody who's who's intact through that entire process i would have to go back and and suggest to myself at times that um that we spend more time probably doing things uh like talking i i mean a, a lot of the situation that um that we had was was obviously constant chatter but it was it was just kind of the way that any father would talk to their 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 child i would probably go back and and try and pursue the conversation more about how she was feeling, how she was navigating those things, you know, whether or not she needed help, you know, how I could figure out how I could help her out, how, well, you know, I, I think it never got swept under the rug, but at the same time, it was never, you know, we just kind of launched into dad daughter time and didn't really do the, a lot of self-examination of our of our individual feelings or our our, our feelings as a family unit. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that it's sort of similar to what you said. I, I think if I were to go back and think about Zoe, because Zoe, Zoe, uh, Zoe and her mom and I were separated very early. She was one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think I probably would have gone back and, and, and just more, more often acknowledge this must be difficult and then just leave yes. it there and see what she says. Um, but I did the same but, thing you did, Doug. I, I, I launched into daddy daughter time. Uh, so, well, in, in, in Tim, I don't know if your experience was like mine. I didn't want the, 
the time to feel heavy for her. Right. I so, definitely yeah, had I wanted, to, I wanted to, to be light and I wanted her to have fun and I wanted her to want to spend time with me and, and to actively seek more time with me when the opportunity presented itself. I didn't want her to feel like it was going to constantly be, you know, something of, uh, you know, heavy and, and very reflective um, if, if she didn't want it to be. But I, I regret the fact that I didn't ask her enough about whether or not she wanted to talk about it. Yeah. And that's, that was on me. It wasn't going to be uh, for her to, uh, to, to explore that with me or to talk about it with me. I should have been the one proactively seeking that. And if she, if she didn't want to talk about it, I would have been happy to move on if that's the way that, that, that she wanted it to be. Uh, but I should have given her more of that audience and, and let her understand to your point that, uh, that her feelings mattered and uh, that it must've been hard right. uh, to go through what she was going through. It's such a tough balance because yeah. both of us really want to be there for our daughters. Yeah. And I get it. She's, my daughter used to be with me two days a week and I wanted yeah. it to uh, be the same way. So, so let's actually then flip the pages forward a little bit because Olivia now goes to a school um, in the Midwest mm -hmm. and um, she's thriving. Have you opened the conversation or maybe how, I, I've got a lot of questions. So let me just stick with the one that's, that's in front of us right now is if you have, how have you invited her to potentially talk about that? Um, that time now, you know what I mean? That time back then, like, have you invited her in some way that if she wants to, she can talk about it with you now? I don't think I've done a great job okay. of it, to be honest with you, Tim. I, I, I think what I've tried to impart to Olivia throughout her entire life is that I'm here and I'm, uh, and I'm listening. I, I used to do... And it's it's funny. I want to ask her if she even remembers this uh -huh. uh, because I, I, we we used to have a lot of time driving between the city and to uh, to my home in the suburbs, and then back into the city at times. And I used to when when she got a little bit older, I used to do something I I used to call uncomfortable conversations with dad. Oh, interesting. And okay, so I had I had her as a captive audience uh, in the car. I wanted to make good use of that time. I knew that as opposed to having that be kind of the central focus of the time that we were spending at the house, I knew the time in the car would be a limited, you know, kind of window of we can shut this on or off. We can make this the in full uh, extent of the ride and, uh, and, and the next stop, pick it up again, the next ride, or we can just let it lie and not really get into anything too deep. But, I wanted her to know from, uh, you know, uh, really the formative years and, and on that, that I was here to listen, that I hopefully was going to give her an indication that, that, that I was going to be here to love and support her and not to judge her in any way. Um, but uh, I don't know if, if that got landed exactly where I, I I wanted it to, because we didn't really get into a whole lot of deep and meaningful conversations about anything that she was going through. I mean, we talked about some things, and she definitely kind of let me know where where things stood at, at any given point as it related to school or or um, any other topic that was important to her. But you know, I, I don't know if it really got you know, to the level, uh, and depth that, um, th that I wished it would, but, but thankfully, um, she had her mom and, uh, she also had, uh, my wife, uh, Susan, who she call is always called mama Sue's, um, you know, from a very early age to talk about some of those things that, that were important to her. And I think thankfully those are two strong women that, um, that have also given her, uh, an ear and uh, a view of, uh, of of things, and uh, in a way that 
that is kind of listening without any sort of prejudice towards a certain path, but simply listening and supporting and, and loving her in the way that um, uh, that that I wanted her to be loved. And if it wasn't, if it was uncomfortable for her to have that conversation with me, I'm just extremely thankful that she had, you know, two people in her life to have those conversations with, and, and she was supported by those those people to uh, to to have, you know, maybe some uncomfortable conversations that that really should should be more with a mom figure than, than with, uh, with it, with a dad. I mean, I, I think as, as fathers, one of our greatest tasks is to give our daughters a perspective of being in a healthy, supported relationship right. with, uh, with somebody of the opposite sex, yeah. um, you know, just, you know, just understanding that um, that you can have the type of relationship that that feels open and, and understanding, and um, you know, uh, you know, the kind of thing that 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 basically can be uh, a landing spot in times of trouble. And and the greatest thing that I think I've tried to do, in part to Olivia, is to indicate to her that. I'm always going to be here. Right. You know, I mean, I always be here physically, obviously, but you know, I'm always, I'm always going to be there. I'm a phone call away. I will drop everything to, to, to be anything you need me to be. If it's just an ear, if it's mm -hmm. to provide some advice, if it's perspective, whatever you need, I am here for you and certainly want you to understand that, um, that, that as Olivia, you are supported. Right. By the way, Doug, this is a great thing you've just popped in my head, which is I can't think of a more important part of life where the words have to meet the actions. <laughs> because if you say you can bring me anything, hold on. If I say you can bring me anything and I'm going to be here to be a supportive, open, um, uh, safe place for you to come to, to give you perspective. And then she comes to it and I am busy with other stuff and I'm not picking up the phone. It's just like that dissonance is really dangerous. And so it's almost like we got to be ready for it whenever it comes. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely correct, Tim. And, and as well, I would add that if you come to that conversation with your own agenda to what you're trying to, uh, to, to get them to, to realize, uh, I think that's when you can get in a lot of trouble right. as well. Because you, right. you suddenly don't seem like you're listening. You suddenly seem like you're just taking, you know, that that opportunity to impart advice or to get a point across or something like that. I mean, I, I don't want to act like there's not a place for, for advice to come right. into the equation, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you have to judge the situation and understand what your daughter needs. Does she need an ear and then a follow-up conversation at some point, just to, to make sure that, that she is, in a good place and is moving on and is able to process whatever she is going through. Um, you know, is she seeking advice? Each, each, I mean, I can't, you're a hundred percent correct. Your actions absolutely have to be consistent with your words in that situation. So when, when I'm telling you, I'm going to be here, that's not being here for me. That's being there for her. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I, absolutely right. And, and like I said, and thankfully Olivia has multiple people, her mother, um, her stepmom, other people to, to be there as well. But I mean, I can't think of a situation, thankfully that, that she called that I didn't, you know, impart, uh, you know, that same philosophy of I'm here in Whatever we need to do and however we need to get through this together, we will. And, and I'm a safe place for you to, to have this conversation. Right. And, you know, I met Susan when I was there uh, for the play and um, just 
side note for our listeners after the play, one of the funniest parts of the evening was Doug had seen the movie It, and there was a <laughs> random red balloon <laughs> bouncing around the restaurant was, that had, was, that had really him shook good. to no end. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> it was it was following around too. It wasn't in and for anybody who has not seen the movie, you know, uh it was a uh a balloon that almost seemed to not be recognized by other individuals and I seemed to be the only people <laughs> so I'm going to constantly ask you, do you did you see that do you see that balloon that's moving around? So just make sure that I didn't stumble into, you know, There's Pennywise's some clutches. Some clown some looking at you from the sewer. <laughs> That was so funny. Uh, anyway, a total yeah. side, side play. It was really yes. funny. Yeah, um, I had forgotten about that, Tim. So thank you for you're welcome for giving me that, that nightmare again. Yeah, exactly. I'm listen. I do all things here on the, the Father Daughter Dance Podcast. It, it, uh, please tell me if a red balloon. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, uh, we might have to end the, the podcast early if that ends. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so I met I met Susan and she's a um, considerate, patient, loving, generous woman. And, you know, like everybody else has difficulties. I didn't really catch any of those that 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 evening. But I, I'm curious if you can talk about the the cycle maybe of how being with her over time has helped you be a better dad and how being a better dad for Olivia has helped you uh, be a better husband for Susan. No, that's a that's a, a great question, and and certainly one that that has multiple layers to it. I I think um, just the appreciation for the things that they both go through. You know, Susan um, in in the workforce, Olivia through through school and and through. Um, you know, obviously getting uh, college applications put together and figuring out where she was going to go to school. And side note to that, I, I will say, um, you know, very consistent with the way that my parents treated me. I, I let Olivia know very early on that that school and where she where she was going to go to school was her journey. It was not mine. And okay. It was not. It was for me to support her again, support any decision that that she made, but but certainly let her know that the decision was hers, and that you know I was uh, just going to be somebody that would be um, a sounding board for questions that she may have in making that decision, but would be as central or as far back in the background as as she needed me to be, mm. and, and thankfully she made a decision that that she's felt very comfortable with for, for that she's now in her senior year and, and, and has done extraordinarily well and has been very focused as a student and, and um, has made her father very, very proud mm -hmm. uh, in the way that she's handled her business. But I think, you know, as, as being, uh, you know, remarried and being and and, and I would even, say this about my ex-wife we have had the kind of conversations that certainly when i go in directions that maybe they don't feel is the proper direction to support olivia they both kind of reined me in to say that's probably what she, not what she needs right now you know you Wait, just, you so, may, just so i'm clear doug when you say they do yeah. you mean susan and your ex-wife yes okay yeah. got it got it, got it. No. go ahead so I, I mean, I, and and I'm not saying they in terms of the the discussion being a three pronged situation, yeah, but yeah. at different times, obviously, yes, um, I've been pulled in by one or the other into a discussion that 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 needs to occur with with Olivia or something that she's dealing with that that, that we need to 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 uh, you know, not that not that they've been really dramatic type events or anything like that, but just simply, you know, you know, she's going through her SATs or going yeah. through, uh, you know, uh, 
testing for college or she she wants to go and and visit this campus or an, another campus and will will you take her and you know a, absolutely some of those things so i think the perspective that that's that Susan has given me about what that journey is like as an adolescent woman um, has, has been uh, very meaningful to me. Right. I, I hope I've kind of always taken her, her guidance into consideration. I can only think of one experience that uh, unfortunately I did not handle very, very well. And, and I had to go back and apologize to Olivia. And it, it really was central to the fact that I felt like um, you know, I wasn't getting full information from her and there were, uh, there were, um, you know, things that were going on her in her life and I wasn't aware of it right. at all, um, that I just, ha I handled it poorly and it was just one, one event. Um, but you know, the, the reality, um, as somebody who has to parent from a distance, uh, at a time, at, at times, especially when she was going, you know, through those years where kids are trying to develop their own identity and kind of distancing themselves from their parents, you know, as, um, as a, a, a dad with a daughter that doesn't live with you full time, right. it's, it, it can feel very isolating and it can feel like you're really not that plugged in uh, at times. And once again, I, I mean, I think the the most important factor is that she knew I was there whenever she needed me and yeah. not she was necessarily always calling on me because once again, you know, she's trying to establish her own identity. Um and and I needed to support her in any way that I could, even if that was taking a back seat to what she was she was going through at any given time. But, yeah. And I would say on on the flip side, you know, being uh a father to Olivia, I hope at least, has given me a, a greater degree of appreciation for both my wife and my ex-wife in terms of you know what they've done to support her and and love her and 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 care for her uh, to such an extent that I've grown in appreciation for both of their contributions to to who she's become as a as a woman and and I think when you. When there's appreciation, there's there's always um, kind of a better uh, position to come from in terms of the relationship you have uh, with uh, with those people in your life. For sure, it's it's interesting to me you're talking about this now because you kind of said um, Olivia was I developing her identity, and I was you know I was sort of apart to a certain extent, but I was there for it. Just it reminds me of how when you were younger you didn't have a shared process with your two brothers and sister about or two brothers and sister, I should say yes. about developing their identity. Um, I did, I, I wasn't, I was the four, I was four or five and we were all two years apart. So I got some view into that, but that, that's just an interesting perspective. Um, so you have a son who um, is adopted. Can you talk a little bit uh, with about Matthew? Like, do you find yourself relating to Matthew in ways that are different than how you re related related to or relate to Olivia? I do. I, I do in some ways. I mean, it's just the difference uh, between, you know, a, a son and, and, and a daughter. And I think I also, um, for long periods of time, you know, carried a heavy amount of, of guilt in relation to, you know, the, the ways in which Olivia had to to persevere without me uh, on a on a regular basis when we we weren't together. Um, so I think I I you know have dealt with her maybe a little bit differently than I've dealt with uh, with my son Matthew. Um, you know he's he's a constant uh, in my life. I don't have those voids of time and. And in ways, way, ways in which, you know, you're, we, we never were restarting a relationship, but we were re-familiarizing ourselves. That's not, that's not a horrible thing to say. I don't want to act like we were ever apart for such a period of time, but, but at the same time, there's still a feeling out period because especially as Olivia was going through 
years that, um, you know, junior high, high school and things like that. I mean, I, we would go out to dinner uh, once or twice a week, but then the cadence of, of my time with her when she was in high school would be every other weekend. Uh -huh. So there'd always be kind of a, you know, let's, let's get back to square one yep. again and get back to, to, to the family unit. And, and then her brother being basically nine years younger uh, than her, um, you know, there was always kind of making sure that they had time to connect as well. And those, uh, those, those weekends that we were together and making sure that, uh, cause Olivia, uh, Olivia is a fantastic big sister. Uh, Matthew absolutely adores her. And, you know, I can tell there's times at which he's kind of like, okay, you and mom go away and we'll just let me have some time with my sister. Um, so, um, and they are extremely loving to one another and, uh, and, and Olivia has embraced him in a way that I couldn't be happier about. As a matter of fact, you know, she, Matthew, um, has, uh, is, has hearing impairments uh -huh. and he is, um, Olivia chose to write, uh, a few of her college essays about, uh, the experience of watching her brother go through struggles in relation to his, um, his hearing impairment and, and how that, um, uh, you know, how that shaped some of her understanding of, of what it's like to have, uh, an issue like that to deal with. And, 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 um, uh, she's also, I mean, to a hundred percent her credit, uh, uh, taken, uh, you know, she's in, um, American sign language four right now, um, Amazing. and has, has taken up and, and understood, you know, and appreciated what, uh, what learning sign language could, could mean in her life. Now her Matthew does not sign, but at the same time, I think she's de developed an appreciation for those individuals who maybe didn't have the level of hearing that Matthew had and, and the ability to utilize um, hearing aids in order to, to hear. And, and I, I think she, she had a number of different options to learn a, another language in, in college. And she, on her own, uh, developed a desire to, to learn sign language and really appreciative for, for the fact that she felt that uh, was an important thing to do. That's that's pretty awesome, man. She obviously cares about her her brother. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's quite touching. Um, yeah, yeah. They they really share touching. things back and forth through um, through their connection, mm -hmm. you know, over the phone. That yeah. it, that isn't a, a, a you know a family thread. It's just the two of them together, and they they go back and forth. And I'll talk to Olivia, and she'll tell me, you know. Um, wonderful, you know, how Matthew made her laugh about something and, 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 and Matthew will, will talk of, you know, completely about how much he misses his sister on a regular basis. So they have a great connection, which I'm extremely appreciative. If Olivia were on here, and by the way, Olivia, listening to this, you are of course invited to be on here at some point if you want, but don't have to. If she were on here and she said, this is the thing that is the toughest to deal with with dad, what would it be? Oh, uh, you know, God, I don't open up that. That's um, <laughs> you, you can call it time of, out if you want, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. She, um, there, there could be a number of things. I mean, I am not without my flaws, uh, without, without question. I think the, the one trait that, that I, I think I can struggle with at times is, uh, is is certainly you know being impatient and uh, and I, I think there's just times at which I've got kind of a like let's just get it done um, uh, you know mantra and as such I can I can kind of feel like you know let's just you know what we should be doing let's just do it and and um, you know I I exhibit that that's that's one of my greatest regrets that uh, I will frankly 
say that I probably don't show that as much to Olivia as I probably show that to Matthew. And and it's something that I've got to change, to be honest with you, because. Why is it one of your biggest regrets? Because it's just, impatience is not a a good attribute. Oh, I see. And, and, you know, I, I need to teach my kids and my kids are both very patient kids. I mean, Olivia, you know, um, once again, probably hasn't seen me exhibit that as much as probably Matthew has has seen it. But, you know, I, I mean, I can be that guy that that can can turn and just be like, really? You know, that's 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 my word that I use every once in a while that, you know, I, I think I'm just imparting that to Matthew and I need to get away from that because yeah. I need to let him know that you know, you need to to show a greater level of patience and appreciation um, for um, for the struggles that um, that that inherently happen in life, and not just be so quick to 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 feel impatient about a situation that that can't be rectified immediately. Was it hard to step back and let Susan develop her own relationship with Olivia? Or maybe the better question is, can you talk about what it was like to step back and let her develop her own relationship? It developed very organically. So it it was, it was great to watch, you know, Susan navigate those waters and she did it fantastically, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, allowing Olivia to know that she was there, but not forcing herself upon Olivia in, in such a way that would have been an attempt uh, to uh, to usurp her her mom's role in her life or yeah. anything like that. She was just really very patiently awaiting her opportunity to be of help wherever she could, but never forcefully requiring that Olivia come to her for help. Uh, so uh, I never had to force that relationship in in, in any way. They were both. Um, they both dealt with it in a way that I, I couldn't have scripted any better. So when we talk about this with patience, and that's, that's a great topic and empathy, which I know you have. I 100% know you have that. And yeah. I, you have been yeah. patient with me at times because I am someone who is all over the place at times. And you, uh, you aren't just patient with me. You're actually like, you actually like really endorse me and encourage me because of the sort of creative wild side I have. Um, but uh do you think your conversations with Olivia are like, do you see in those conversations similarities to the way either your mom or dad used to talk to you? I do. Okay. I see bits and pieces of both my mom and my dad in, in, in different uh, situations. Um, my dad, extremely patient. Uh, person you know he um he did whatever he could to give me a perspective on uh, on how he hoped my life would go and the ways in which you know you need to understand uh that, that you need to let go of certain oh, things wow times. Great. and um and i i i will tell you i have struggled with that throughout my entire life. And, and there's been certainly been times where I, you know, I've, I've had to reinforce that thought or just hear my dad's voice in, in my head. I'm, I'm coming up on, you know, 20 years of being without my dad, mm. um, which is, is, I will tell you, I've had a lot of conversations with him since he passed yeah. and he passed very, very suddenly. Ugh. And I would, I would just say, um, you know, it was, Olivia was only, um, you know, one. one yeah, she had been one. Yeah, she was, yeah, she was very, very young. And I remember it, he passed away very, very subtly uh, over the evening. And to give you an understanding of probably the connection that I had with my father, um, the night that he passed away, Olivia was with me. It was a Thursday evening. Uh, I remember being awoken from a dead sleep and jumping up out of bed and running to Olivia's bedroom to make sure that she was okay because I had a 
a crazy feeling wow. that something was wrong. Wow. And I went in there and I was relieved to find that Olivia was okay and everything. But but I went back to sleep with a, still a feeling of of uh, of being unsettled in some way. And I found out the next morning that my father had passed away that evening. Um, and fortunately had passed away. He was up here. My mom was down in Florida at, at the time because Ugh. they kind of went between and, um, and, you know, when I talk about strong women in my life too, I can't fail to mention my sister who has been a huge influence on me throughout my entire life and a really strong individual who, uh, was the person who unfortunately had to go and find my dad. And oh. I don't know where she found the strength to do that and, and how difficult a, a circumstance, but I can't think of a person that I, you know, that is stronger than my sister as well in terms of, you know, helping uh, shape her own family, helping to be a support to, to me at times that I needed it and, uh, and just help, helping to shape my appreciation for strong women. Um, in in my life so i it you know just a a great example uh as well but you know having my dad uh you know losing my dad you know at you know in my in my very early 30s mm -hmm. um has been you know was was a difficult thing and and but you know i i still feel his 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 calming voice yeah. Um, you know, telling me to let go of these things at times, I just, I, I need to probably listen to him more. I, my dad used to always say to me, he goes, um, he's just, we're, my dad, we're all Italian on my dad's side, but we're, we're kind of Northern or, or the middle part of Italy. But he used to say, you've, you have some Sicilian in you uh, as well, because mm -hmm. you seem to feel like if somebody you know, kind of wrongs you, you, you take note and you kind of, uh, definitely, uh, struggle with letting that go at times. So that's, that's the thing over time that I wish, um, I, I could change about myself and I've gotten better about it, but it, it, at times, certainly I, I do feel like I'll navigate towards those treacherous waters of, of feeling like, you know, um, that loyalty or disloyalty is is something that that I can't forgive, and, yeah. and that's not a good trade either. Yeah. Well, I was, I was with the impatient. Well, I mean, God, I now that I reflect on it, I'm glad I didn't beat you at baseball. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 interesting. I I will say this: it's it's not something that that I've ever kind of fallen in the traps of with my friends and. Uh -huh. and um, it's 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 more kind of the acquaintance okay. situation, uh, not not you know I I have a very very long fuse uh, as it relates to friends and and family and the and the people that are most important to me uh, in my life. It's it's just more of you know people that you you find in business that that uh, that you feel like do business the wrong way or. Or other things like people that you cross paths with more um, in a in a much more superficial manner that that I feel like I can be more impatient with those individuals and 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 more willing uh, unwilling to let go uh, in, in terms of it. but there the the starting point is not a relationship of of mutual friendship the starting point is more. Acquaintance um, or know, professional acquaintance, relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Got it. Yeah. Well, uh, it's been awesome. I, I want to ask one more question and then I'm going to give you the floor. Um, sure. Um, okay, Olivia, I hope if you're, if you're listening to this, you feel what I feel, which is you have a father who loves you deeply, who is uh, courageous enough to talk about, you know, what you mean to him and the uh, challenges he has and some of the great things he brings and, and the incredible lineage that he brings in your life. Cause I'm certainly feeling it. And um, I, I would hope that if, you know, should she listen it. to this, that it would create conversations between you guys. Just one last quick question about her, um, which is 
you know, now that she is, uh, you know, several years into her college age and, um, you know, they, they just got to remember, you talk about letting go. Um, um, I mean, you did let go. You gave about college, like you just let her choose her, 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 her choice, which is important. Like, is there anything that, um, that's, let's take, let's take um, physical safety and put it to the side, right? Something bad happened to her or, or, or her getting hurt or something like that. What's the thing as her dad that scares you the most? Um, f- frankly, her not feeling like she's in a, a good solid place or a, a place where she feels validated and, and comfortable and supported. Yeah. And, you know, that's, that's my, probably my greatest concern i mean outside of physical safety right of course I mean, unfortunately you know and, and when you took that off the table tim obviously that's um that's that's a huge factor as well but you know it, it's not only you know are you physically in a comfortable spot or physically safe it's are you emotionally safe yeah too i mean and do you feel um you know in in I will give full credit to Olivia as well. She is somebody that um, that gives and um, expects, you know, loyalty, um, fair treatment. You know, you you name it. I mean, the people that she's chosen to uh, to have in her life are there for a reason, and that's so that she can. Uh, support them and 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 feel supported by them as well it's not um it, it's you know she doesn't uh uh take the idea of friendship and and the responsibility that comes with it lightly uh, so uh you know i would say you know her having the, the sense that she is in a good uh space as far as her um mental health and uh and her um position uh being one of uh of a comfortable spot where she feels supported is is my my greatest concern now she hasn't given me any consideration that she does not feel that yeah. way and and um which is which is good but i hope she always feels comfortable enough to to come to me with that um with that concern if it does pop up because we are we are living in a time that i think is um uh can can be very difficult uh to get away from noise yeah um, if it exists in your life because there's just there's very few safe havens where you can feel like you're you're not you know kind of having whatever is a problem kind of consistently in your face yeah. So, um, you know, I want her to know that, that that we are a safe place and that she can always feel comforted um, with knowing that she's supported and loved unconditionally, um, which is a, a word that probably isn't used enough. And that's unconditional um, in, in her life. And, and I also feel like in one of the greatest things that I think is the responsibility of a father is to show and employ the types of traits that show that consistently to your family in such a way that that creates the model for for your daughter to uh, to feel comfortable with, you know, in terms of game with somebody of the opposite sex you know i i I want her to to understand that that she is uh, absolutely worthy of of being appreciated and loved and supported and and to know that she should at the very least expect that um and to not have you know relationships and situations in her life where where she's choosing to freely spend of her own free time with people who do not choose to respect her in such a way that's that's i think the biggest 
thing that you can show as a father is that you um, are, are willing to appreciate your daughter and support your daughter in such a way that you would choose to have somebody that they would want to spend their life with, um, you know, mimic those same, some at those attributes. I, the, the last thing that I would ever want to be is a, is a negative role model, uh, for her eventual relationships, um, in, and, and especially, you know, marital relationships. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know personally, the thing I struggle with most with Zoe is, uh, knowing that her navigating to something that is exactly what you're describing is that maybe some of the thing, you know, there, there may be a thing or two or more that holds her back that have something to do with where I wasn't the dad she needed or the dad, even today, like I make mistakes. And so it's, um, it is, it is a, uh, it is a difficult thing, a very difficult thing to actually be there for. And you are right. The world is fraught with uh, all kinds of um, nonstop, it seems, like invasion of the minds and heart. But um, uh, so well, here's the deal. And, and Go ahead. Especially, Tim, too, I would just add this. You and I both came from a position of, of not being with um, your, your daughter's biological mother right. at the time through all of these forms of... So you and I already, you know, started right. below right. the equator in many respects in, right. it, because it, I was our, already struggling with, have I given uh, Olivia the uh, impression that, that I'm being disrespectful yeah. to my ex-wife in, in some way? And so that was, you know, I, I always wanted her to know. And, and once again, to the credit of my ex-wife, you know, she always allowed me to be part of the parenting decision making process to such a, a degree that although we were not under the same uh, roof, yeah. we were still part of a family unit that was that was certainly all, you know, on Team Olivia at the end of the day. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it, it, coming from that space, you're already kind of unfortunately in a, in a place where you're, you're struggling because you feel like, you know, did, did my daughter feel like it's, you know, that I immediately disrespected her mom as, as part of this process. And, and, you know, that's, that, that's, that was a struggle and continues to be a struggle and is probably something that I should have talked to. Olivia well, that, I mean, about. that really goes back to what we were talking about earlier about how even today I say to Zoe, it's just like, she, one day we were talking about childhood wounds. She's, a, she's going to be a teacher and she took some psychology classes and that kind of thing. And it's just, I need to say to her, look, you may not be aware of stuff that uh, is inside you that hurt you that I did and may have something to do with a uh, relationship with her mom. Her mom is amazing. She was amazing during her, um, when we were uh, apart. Uh, but yep. when the time is ready, I'm open to have that conversation. Um, so um, this has been an incredible conversation. Thank you so much for uh, being on the pod. Um, so the, the last thing is you have um, about up to five minutes to literally talk about anything you want. I mean, you've covered a ton of stuff and it can be about your relationship with her. It can be about, you can share a pers like a, a more global perspective about, you know, the challenges of being a dad in today's environment. And um, it can be about your parents again, if you want to bring that up and how it affects you as a dad or it can be anything you want, Doug, but you've got five minutes and I will do my very best not to jump in with a question. It's really hard for me to do, by the way, but you have five minutes to talk about up to five minutes, to talk about whatever you want. I, I mean, Tim, you have been fantastic at, Thanks. at kind of taking me into places that, uh, that, that frankly convey a lot of the message that I would choose to, to try and, and, and impart to, to other dads. Uh, as they, you know, go on this journey. And, and the one thing that I, I, I would say is that your journey, my journey, there's, there's some similarities in, in certain respects, but every journey is, is different. And what you need to, to understand is that there's certainly no playbook that anybody works from. I mean, it's, it's a lot of, you know, let me just, uh, persevere through situations and, and, and make everybody understand that, that I am present and I'm here. And, you know, 
I, I mean, I didn't always successfully do that. I mean, as you would suspect, I had times that, you know, you're just, you know, work has gotten the better of you and you come in, as I would say, kind of on four flat tires when, when your daughter uh, comes in uh, to spend time with you. And, you know, I didn't always, you know, do it probably, you know, in a, in a way that, that I'm proud of. But at the same time, I, I think it's the more elongated, consistent message that that I sa- would say is more meaningful. And and I, I thankfully have a daughter who is, um, you know, willing to uh, to have conversations, uh, willing to reach out, uh, willing to um, uh, to be uh, a part of my life and and actively. Uh, seek my counsel at times um, and willing to listen to it, but willing to also formulate her own opinions. So, I mean, I think we've all done something right uh, as right. a collective family unit and creating somebody who will formulate their own opinions and, and, and act upon those opinions themselves and whether or not I've had truly as meaningful a role in shaping those. Um, I don't know. I have always said to Olivia, you are not me. You are not your mom. You're not your stepmom. You're not your stepdad. Mm -hmm. You're not, you are you and you need to do what's best for you in terms of the tools and, and, and things that you have, um, and the ways in which, you know, life meets you. Um, you have to do things uniquely, in the way that you choose to. And I, I would say the same thing about Matthew as well. I mean, he's he's got a different set of challenges and, and things that, that he deals with. And, and and thankfully I've got a son who meets them head on as well and is, uh, has dealt with some struggles, uh, but has persevered through those struggles as well. So I think as it relates to, you know, kids overall, I, I think, you know, just being a, a a good role model, being a present force in your kid's life and being an active listener. I think that's, they get talked about enough that I don't think we're going to surprise anybody with those comments. And I don't I certainly think that I'm, I'm splitting the atom by introducing those, those concepts in, on your podcast itself. But I will just say that those things um, work. They do. And if you just trust the process of being ever present force in your kid's life, they may kind of move away from you at times and try and establish their own identities, but you will feel them come back at some point. And the, the, the biggest um, attribute that, that I hope uh, I've had is that consistency Mm -hmm. that, that lets Olivia know that, you know, yeah, you may not have pulled the old tool out of your, your toolbox at times and your dad, but you, that tool's always been there and always been ready when you need it. And um, that sounds very cliched, but at the, at the same time, I, I just think that the people that, that I have talked to that have had struggles or concerns, it's all been when a split finds itself in their lives and it doesn't get rectified right and and it ends up you know becoming uh, a seismic wedge right and and it's just at some point you you know it just becomes too difficult to recover from because you know there's there's feelings that that come into the uh, the equation that people can't get over um you know and can't let go uh, of and I, that's the thing that that I would have never wanted to happen and, and, and still never want to happen in my relationship uh, with, uh, with my daughter and my son. Well, you know, the thing is, Doug, you may be saying that you're not splitting the atom or anything like that, but it's like you just encapsulated like in that uh, eloquent discussion or elo- eloquent um, comments on what it's all about, which is just the great thing about what you're saying is it's the call for every dad listening to this is that <clears throat> that stuff that you're talking about, about presence and being there, it, it puts the responsibility squarely on me as a dad. The work for me is there. 
how am I present? How am I there? And and I, I find that very hopeful because it's like, hey, look, we can do the work. Um, so anyway, uh, look, Doug, it's, you know, I love you. I love you, I love uh, you too, Doug. Um, a ton. Uh, you've been a great part of my life for, good Lord, a lot of years now. And I really appreciate you being willing to go into the conversation that we had in, in a lot of different ways and, and, and takes a, and, and, and go with depth and courage. And um, Olivia is a lucky um, young woman. And I am certainly a, a yucky, uh, yucky, lucky. I am kind of yucky, lucky <laughs> older man to have had you on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Well, I, let me just say this for the record as well, Tim. I, I just... I love what you're doing with the podcast and I love the fact that you're getting some of these issues out in the open because if I had had the capability to have something like this to draw upon in in the earlier part of uh, of my experience in, in trying to be a dad, I think I would have drawn strength from it. And you are absolutely living uh, that uh, that goal of 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 being um, somebody who is providing support uh, to a group that that in a lot of ways, um, again, I, I said it earlier. You know, there there's no playbook out there. None. That's completely the same for every dad and what you're going through. Because there's there's aspects of your own personal life. There's aspects of your work life. There's all sorts of things that get kind of jumbled into what your life experience is all about. But when you're if you're able to to understand that there's other dads that have gotten through it, yep. Uh, at it, it, at times, I'm sure for you, at times for me, it felt really hard. Yeah, and, and lonely. Um, lonely, absolutely right. And and you don't, you know, every time your your child walks out that door, a part of you walks out that door as yeah. well. And 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 I'm not, and I'm saying that to dads who might not be part of a a divorced family as well. I'm saying that to dads when, when your child walks out and goes to school or when you, when you have to go on business trips for long periods of time and you don't see yeah. your, your kids, but um, it's, it, thank you for, for bringing these issues to light because I think with, uh, with understanding with, uh, with the resources that you're bringing to dads, hopefully some people won't make the same mistakes that I made or that other people have made. And, and, and hopefully we, you've helped and hopefully in some small way I've helped is, is part of a broader podcast environment to, to, to give dads uh, some perspective. Yep. You're welcome. And you have, thank you again for being on the podcast, Doug. <laughs>